Hello and full person, this is Anton, and looks like we're going to be talking about Perseverance rover once again. NASA is really on the roll. Yet another incredible achievement has been accomplished by the mission, something that has never been done on any planet or any moon or really anywhere else outside of planet Earth. Something that involves this beautiful and unusual box you see right here. But before that, let's also quickly investigate this newly released video by NASA that shows us the dust cloud as the helicopter took off on the first powered flight on another planet only a few days ago. You can find the enhanced version of this video in the description below, but here you can actually see quite a large plume of dust um, as the helicopter takes off, and another slightly smaller plume of dust when the helicopter lands. Something that I guess is kind of expected, but nevertheless is pretty cool to see, because it's on another planet. But anyway, so what's in a box and what did NASA achieve? Well, this particular video and this particular mission relates to something known as in-situ resource utilization, also known as ISRU for short. One example of this would be some sort of an autonomous robotic excavation and processing of Martian soil in order to, for example, extract water or even construct the buildings where the future astronauts will be living. At the same time, it also involves the production and storage of various cryogenic materials such as oxygen and methane which would then be used by rockets landing on Mars in order to take the astronauts either to other parts of the solar system or, obviously, back to planet Earth. And there are actually quite a lot of other ISRU concepts that NASA already has in development, many of them for the lunar mission and a lot of them are for the Martian mission. But the idea is pretty simple. You want to be able to create resources from the stuff that's already where you're going. Obviously, so that you don't have to bring all of this stuff with you wherever you are going. So, for example, if we land on the moon, we want to be able to produce water, oxygen, and possibly even food directly on the moon so that we don't actually have to haul it there all the way back from Earth. Mostly because every single pound that we bring with us is actually really expensive. But naturally, you want to start small, you want to start with baby steps, and you also want to start with small experiments that you bring along with other missions. With the Ingenuity helicopter being one of these missions, and the device known as MOXIE being the other. And this one here is a lot more exciting. Because once again, NASA just made history only a few days after making the history with the first flight. They were able to convert some of the Martian carbon dioxide and produce oxygen. Oxygen that can naturally be used for breathing, that can be used for production of fuel, and oxygen that was essentially produced from the resources available on Mars. And remember, Martian atmosphere for the most part is predominantly carbon dioxide roughly around 95%. And this is how all of this compares to Venus and Earth. But Martian atmosphere is also very thin. It's less than 1% of the atmospheric pressure of Earth atmosphere. And so there's not a lot of CO2, but whatever is there is there for us to use. And because Martian atmosphere is basically carbon and two oxygens, naturally there is a way for us to try to take some of the oxygen from carbon dioxide and turn it into oxygen we can breathe. Or in, in some sense, you can almost think of it as reverse photosynthesis. And one of the ways we can actually take some of the oxygen away is by applying heat plus electricity to the CO2 molecule. By doing this, the oxygen does separate from the molecule, allowing us to then maybe transport it into something else. And so over the past few years, the scientists have found a pretty interesting technique that's described in many different papers, including the two I'm posting in the description below, that allows us to use nothing but electricity, heat, and a thin layer of what's known as Scandia doped zirconia ceramics that has a very specific role of extracting the oxygen ions. In this case, it's two oxygen ions with negative charge, which is first produced in this layer right here, where the CO2 is converted into carbon monoxide and the oxygen ion by applying really, really hot temperatures of about 800 degrees Celsius and by also running a current through this to separate the molecule. And as the O2 ion goes through this layer, it then gets attracted to the next layer, which is positive in charge. And since the negatively charged oxygen ion is attracted to the positively charged anode, it then acquires two electrons from this anode and becomes normal oxygen. And so out of two carbon dioxide molecules, you get two carbon monoxide molecules and one molecule of oxygen. And because all of this can then be sort of layered and sandwiched into a relatively large structure, this relatively small device is actually capable of producing approximately 10 grams of oxygen per hour. 
Now, currently it only produced 5 grams as a test, so basically half its hourly capacity. But at its maximum capacity, it can hypothetically produce enough oxygen for an astronaut to do normal activities for roughly around 20 minutes or so. So in other words, for every astronaut you would want to have at least 3 but possibly even more of these in order to function properly. But this is a small version and also this is just a test. So naturally being able to produce 5.37 grams of oxygen on the first try is a huge success. Which of course suggests that this technique works and it works really well. And considering the fact that I only heard about MOXIE for the first time back in 2013 when NASA only theoretically started thinking about it, it's sort of mind-blowing to think that after about 7 years or I guess 8 years, they were able to not just make it but also land it on Mars and already test it, establishing the fact that this technique works really well and will definitely allow the scientists to use the atmosphere of Mars to easily produce quite a lot of resources right there on site. Or at least in this case to produce oxygen. And oxygen is already needed for breathing, but it's also needed as an oxidizer for a typical rocket. And so in this case, the rocket that you see right here is actually using liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen mix in order to propel itself from the planet. And so technically we're already half there, we just need to figure out the hydrogen part now. But this was just the first step. Now the next few steps are going to involve more advanced tests. So first of all, one of the major tests here is going to be testing MOXIE in different atmospheric conditions depending on, for example, storms, depending on different pressures, and of course different temperatures on the surface of Mars. Is it going to be able to function just as well, no matter what the conditions are? And since Mars also has seasons, like planet Earth, it's also going to be important to test this in approximately a year from now when the temperatures are going to be a lot colder. As a matter of fact, you can almost say that Mars has not four, but six seasons. It obviously has spring, winter, fall, and uh, summer, but it also has a season that some scientists refer to as perihelion and aphelion. This is related to the closest location to the Sun and the farthest location from the Sun. Because naturally, when Mars is closer to the Sun, it's going to be overall warmer. And so testing MOXIE at different times of the Martian year, which lasts for something like 690 Earth days, is really important in order to establish if it's going to be working all year long. Maybe there are certain conditions where it's not going to function well. But the scientists are really trying to push MOXIE to its limits and they're also going to be testing it in different temperatures and also different environments depending on where rover is located. And this is done so that we can establish the baseline for the production of oxygen and also establish any possible, as scientists call them, wrinkles or basically possible errors in order to be aware of what this device can do and what it can't do. And so overall this whole process will take roughly around two years. And after two years we'll hopefully have either a complete confirmation that MOXIE works as expected or we might find some things that don't work as well. But for now, all we know is that the oxygen seems to be generated and generated quite well. And all of this thanks to this unusual layer you see in between of the materials known as ceramic oxides that at high temperatures start to attract or start to conduct oxygen ions. So if it wasn't for this particular material, this would never actually work. But the study that I posted in the description below suggests that technically, the way that the MOXIE device is designed right now, it hypothetically is capable of producing enough oxygen, and here we're talking about approximately 25 tons of oxygen, or around 55,000 pounds, that would be able to deliver a rocket back to planet Earth. And that's of course without replacing anything on the inside. And that amount of oxygen a single person usually uses in roughly around 70 years or so. So that's basically a life supply of oxygen for an average individual. Although obviously using one of these would be unrealistic, it would take close to 300 years and by then, um, well the batteries used on the rover would no longer be operational. Either way, the important thing is that it works, and it works pretty well. But now the goal is going to be to discover when it doesn't work. What conditions is it going to be malfunctioning in? So that's pretty much the mission for the next two years, and that's exactly what the scientists are going to try to uncover with the main goal being pushing MOXIE to its limits. But we can of course also extract oxygen from these ice caps you see right here, although according to the scientists behind this paper, it's a lot more effective to just use MOXIE. Apparently producing oxygen from the atmosphere itself is a lot more feasible and might require a lot less energy than by using electrolysis to do it from water ice or by extracting it from the ground. 
And so when it comes to Mars exploration and Mars colonization, there is a chance we might have solved at least one problem. The problem of generating oxygen. But there are obviously so many problems to go and so many things we need to still consider. So once NASA discovers something else and once we hear something else really amazing from the Perseverance probe, I'm going to make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, well, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. All of the links are there as well, and all of the relevant info I mentioned in this video. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.